let it shine. Welcome to Worship with Aldersgate. It's so good to see you all tuning in and here in the room. What a room full of people we have. And it smells like bacon. It smells like bacon here for the first time in 15 months. Let's give bacon a hand. Wow. Why does it smell like bacon, Sam? Because we did a breakfast for all the kids in the youth group and had the science school teachers and mentors come have breakfast. Yeah, today we're celebrating the Christian education ministry over the last year, this year of like total innovation and creativity at all times, mandatory. <laughs> yep. So we're celebrating that and we have such a nice group of uh, children here, especially so glad to see you along with teachers and mentors. So we're glad that you're joining in with us. For people in the room, uh, remember, please take out your phone and say hello to people who are worshiping online so they feel a part of the community. Uh, we want them to know that we see them and are glad that they are here. Also, if you are online only, um, go ahead and like or comment so that we know that you've been here because that's if you interact with the post, we will uh, be able to see that. So this is the way today is going to go. We're not going to have... So, so put your favorite bacon emoji. Favorite bacon emoji. There's your <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, we're going to have a prayer and then uh, no children's moment today because the whole service is geared uh, towards the kids. Um, we, after the prayer, a little bit of conversation with you uh, about what Sunday school was like, we will um, do a slideshow, pictures throughout the year. I will tell you that it blessed me so much to review everything that has been done this year in Christian Ed because it, it, it had to adapt so quickly and I'm really proud. And, and God was just very good to give us creativity and and ideas and people coming, so that's wonderful. So we'll see the slideshow then. I'm gonna have an interview with one of our Sunday School teachers and mentors, Laura O'Meara, this morning um, to hear about her experience because she's just a very, very gifted teacher and if you haven't met her, she's somebody that, that you want to know, delightful. So I'll chat with Laura and then we get to hear from some kids about how things went. Uh, so we'll hear from the children, then we'll see the teachers, recognize them and the mentors and the leaders, youth group leaders and uh, then go on to a, a collection and announcements at the end. So that's the service today. And hopefully we can stick to the script. I mean, just because it's so different, I'm afraid I'm gonna forget something, Sam. You're in charge. Oh, right, right. You're yeah. in charge of helping me remember. <laughs> All right, let's have a quick word of prayer. Lord God, we are grateful, grateful to be here together in person, those of us on site, and for the friends joining online. God, we ask that you would bind us together in a spirit of community no matter where we are. We thank you for an opportunity to celebrate the Christian education ministry this year at Aldersgate, uh, for the beautiful weather that allowed folks to dine safely outside today, and um, just for your grace, God. You've been so good to us during a really challenging season, and so let us always be mindful and celebrate that today, too. God, we ask that this service would be an encouragement to all who are with us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Daniel is bringing us some special music from Illinois. Over to you, Daniel. Okay, some of you might be familiar with this song, some of you might not. 
Um, if you've heard it and you know the motions, feel free to do them along in church. Every move I make, I make in you. You make me move, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe. throwback for me. I used to know the motions. I don't know them anymore. We'll have to look that up because I look forward to uh, doing a little dance sometime yeah. to that song. Thank you. So um, as I said when we started out, oh my goodness, what an unusual year for Christian Ed. Obviously, you know, March last year, thrown online. The whole thing. Boom! Yeah. Every, it's like, like uh, somebody snapped their fingers and the building disappeared and we had to figure out how to do it. And uh, right away in the beginning for Christian Ed, uh, I think pretty quickly, where's Elaine? Probably there you are. I think we went on to Zoom pretty fast for Sunday school. Yeah, so that was quick. We knew how to do that one because the right. whole world moved on to Zoom basically, right? So we said, we will too. Yeah, so that was fine. But the tricky one was confirmation because usually we would make food and eat it nice and close. Like this. Yeah. yeah. And then we would have the lesson. So we had to cut out that part and... Right. Do confirmation in a garage. Right. And well, in the youth group, in the beginning, the youth group didn't meet in person. They played some online games over Zoom, which were really fun to watch. It was actually one of the noisiest nights in my house. <laughs> I remember kids around the table from my family all tuned in yelling. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. It was a good yelling. It was. Yeah. So we had to just be creative initially, and then we did some brainstorming over the summer to be more strategic. So we'll be hearing about how that more intentional program happened uh, starting in the fall. Uh, but just to give you a flavor, uh, we wanted to get, show you a slideshow of the year. It's chronological. There was an end of summer pool party uh, in the very beginning, and you'll see the events throughout the whole calendar year. So um, I've asked Daniel if he would go ahead and share that slideshow.
Sorry, Facebook friends, it's not coming through on Facebook. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> I'm hearing that it's not coming on Facebook, Daniel. Maybe you want to play some music, but we're seeing, um, well, I don't want to narrate the whole thing, but we'll let the people in the room watch. So it is blank on Facebook. So maybe we should just chat a little bit so people on Facebook aren't entirely bored. There you go. We did some outdoor gardening projects and we met uh, various different groups met on Zoom. There were three different mentoring groups that met throughout the year uh, on Zoom. We saw a picture of those Zoom meetings. Um, we saw some kids come out in the fall and plant daffodil bulbs, which is a great metaphor for investing now and seeing fruit later. And in October, we had a uh, trunk or treat, a trick-or-treating event uh, where people opened the trunks of their car and uh, decorated them so that kids could go through trick-or-treating safely. Uh, we had a number of friends, huge number of friends from the Little Treasures Preschool uh, for that event, which was marvelous. Uh, I think there were 100 people who came through that event in October. Of course, it snowed first thing that morning and was 17 degrees, I think, when I woke up and I was terrified. But uh, God was still very good. Well, and I think we'll do the trunk or treat every Saturday before Halloween from now on. Yeah, that was a new learning. Some things we learned we're keeping, right? Uh, the a youth group carved pumpkins, and they were distributed to families in the church, some households in the church. Um, they also uh, did a video Christmas pageant this year with so many rehearsals. Oh, my gosh, there were a lot of rehearsals, but that's why it was so good. They were able to go out to the movies. You can rent a whole movie theater, um, which one of the mentoring groups uh, developed art as part of their lessons. So we're looking at a few slides of the beautiful art that came from that. Usually, coming up to Christmas time, we decorate the sanctuary as a group and we have a lunch. This year that wasn't possible, so the youth group was the one that decorated our Christmas trees here in the sanctuary. They had a Valentine's party and stuffed Easter eggs later on to get ready for the Easter egg hunt. So we're seeing pictures of uh, kids and candy, which is a happy combination. Uh, and, and now pictures of the Easter egg hunt itself. Um, we were so glad to be able to invite very young kids to the church because it's been harder to do ministry with young children. Right, because they don't do Zoom. Yeah, they not, it's not as good for them. So any occasion that brought little kids to the church, we were so thankful for. These are all church-related uh, families. We also had some families from Little Treasures who came by for this as well. More gardening. <laughs> um, and this last slide, if we hold here, uh, the, the daffodils we planted last fall did bloom uh, about a month ago. And may it be so with our children as we plant faith into their lives. Yes. Uh, all right. Thank you, Patient Faith. There are still 17 people watching on Facebook. You all are heroes to stick with us. Oh, my goodness. They must be like our best friends. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Thank yes. you for being patient with us. So hopefully you guys on Facebook can click on that link later and see. So yeah, we'll make sure YouTube of it uh, gets out as well. Um, if we can, we can make a YouTube. So I want to uh, ask you to trade places with oh, Laura yeah. O'Meara so that we can uh, have a quick interview. We were supposed to do that, but I didn't know I was narrating the live show. Go, Laura. Laura, you're double vaccinated and out two weeks? I am. So am I, and that's why we are sitting here next to each other with no masks. Can you hear we, me? Uh, yeah, it's the soundboard's job to make sure you're okay. heard. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here, Laura. It's a little bit of a high stool, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I always feel like Kelly Ripa when I sit up on this stool. I wish I had those legs and shoes, though. Your shoes are fabulous. Yeah. Instead, we have a modesty curtain, so we don't have to worry about any of that. Um, so, Laura, um, for people who haven't met you before, will you introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Laura O'Meara, and I've been a member of this United Methodist Church probably, I don't know, like... Maybe four or five years Yeah, now. four years, I think. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and I've been a Methodist most of my life. So, yeah, yeah. We're, we're so happy you found this Methodist yeah, church. Yeah. And when you came over here right away, you expressed an interest in teaching Sunday school. You have a daughter, right? I have a stepdaughter, and I have a son who is um, graduating from college next weekend. So. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so, wonderful. Kids. Yeah, yeah. And your daughter, I haven't met your son, I met your daughter. She's yeah. older, but you have a gift with little kids. I do. Well, I've always loved children. <laughs> You know, and I was thinking before this interview that I had worked with children in high school too. So it's always been a passion to be with kids. I love kids. It definitely is a calling, and yeah. like right away, because we don't know each other that well. But when I saw you working with kids, I thought this is this is her vocation. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. So when you first came and started teaching Sunday school here in the before times, what was that like? Before, uh, obviously, everything was in person, so it was nice and easy. You know, yeah. the kids, you're here, and the kids come, and we teach our lesson. Um, so, yeah, everything was in person. Yeah, yeah. And no thought of any of this stuff. No. You know, I, like it never occurred even before the pandemic that we would even use this kind of technology. So it's kind of, an, you know, I think going to be an eye-opener. It definitely was. It taught us things we didn't know that we can do and some of the things we didn't want to have to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. And we learned to appreciate <laughs> seeing people in person. So um, last summer we sat down, a group of us, uh, thinking about Christian Ed in the church and like how are we going to make this happen this year. Um, do you remember anything from that conversation or what, we, what was on our minds? We're well, I think the biggest concern was making sure that the kids didn't get lost in all this, that we keep communication going, that we try to maintain everything as normal as possible, like keep up Sunday school. And we added some things. Um, so I think the goal was to stay connected and just keep going. Yeah. And we were able to do that. And so the kids wouldn't feel lost in this, that we weren't going to take a break. And we didn't. We didn't even have, I don't think, one week off. It just kept going, which was nice. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so we came up with a model where there would be Sunday school on Zoom before church, kind of, mm -hmm. like usually we have it during church when in normal times, and who knows what we're going back to. That's what's interesting. Are we going back, right? Are yeah. going into a new thing. But so Sunday school on Sunday mornings. Uh, the new thing that came out, well, let me say that confirmation was adapted uh, to be in person with no food, and youth group met a little bit online, but a lot in person. A youth group was ready to come back with masks in person pretty quick. Um, you developed a new idea. I think it was your idea. Oh, yeah, the mentoring, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this idea of mentoring that sometimes Sunday mornings can be challenging for families, and families were so overwhelmed um, that maybe we could get the kids in, in very small groups with a mentor to teach a lesson at a time convenient uh, during the week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, where did that come from? Uh, probably from my background in social work. That's a th something that's used um, with children often. Um, but I like the idea of adults working on a smaller, in a smaller sense with kids, especially kids that don't like the larger group settings. Uh, and I love the idea of like older children working with younger children and mentoring. And you know, to yeah. me, mentoring is so important. You know, you have good people who have good messages. Right. to send to children and it's just another way to do teaching and, and getting the word out. Yeah, I think so. And when you use the word mentoring instead of teaching, to me it implies that the relationship there is very important, right? Like a Absolutely. role modeling. Um, so it's not just the teaching of knowledge, but it's uh, the teaching of um, maybe attitudes or uh, habits or life or, um, yeah. yeah, it's a little bit more personal. Uh, some, it could be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. All right. So uh, you were one of our three mentors this year. You had two groups, two mentoring groups. Can you share some highlights? I had a great time. I yeah. had um, Eva, and I had Timmy and Riley, and I just was so blessed. Um, I, I just have to say, when I turned on that screen, I always smiled, and I always sometimes had a rough day at work, and I just turned on that screen. I was so happy to see these kids. Yeah. Highlights were, you know, children love to laugh, and they laugh at everything. So there was a lot of good laughs about pickles and silly things, um, laughter. Pickles are really funny. And yeah. then we also had fun with the Bible. Um, we were wondering if there were two Elijahs. There was Alicia and Elijah and different names that I cannot pronounce. And then Rachel and Sam would be in the background helping me out sometimes. <laughs> but we had a lot of fun. And I think with children, you can be yourself because they're not going to judge you, whereas adults <laughs> tend to 
you know, be sometimes more critical, but it was just nice kids, you know, we could make fun of the Bible and not know everything, and um, yet the, the message was strong about, you know, God's there for us, but we, we had a lot of fun, like it was just fun. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. So the positives, even though it was remote, so that's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think, as we go forward into the next year, this is very much a live question, like, have we learned things that we should carry forward um, into the program next year. What do you think about that? I just think an open mind to the idea. I mean, what basically happened is technology got kind of put upon us. Um, and I think keeping an open mind about maybe how we can integrate technology into, you know, the children's ministry, um, whatever that's going to be, especially for people who can't get here. Um, maybe a child who's in the hospital could now have visit with video or somebody that does prefer a mentoring model versus coming to Sunday school, but just really keeping an open mind that video technology is what kids know better than us. <laughs> Definitely. And it's what's being used, you mm -hmm. know, so taking advantage of that and really going into this with an open mind for the future. Yeah, I think about that, especially we've always, I mean, for years and years, since way before, you know, We've struggled when there's it's sports seasons and things like that, when people have conflicts on Sunday mornings. Because our culture is not set up necessarily to force everyone in the doors of a, of a house of worship on a weekend, you know? Uh, that's sort of special when people choose to do that. Um, so sometimes there's very natural scheduling conflicts, but I think we've learned how to maybe do better at reaching the kids who also have soccer or whatever else it is. Yeah. On Sunday. So I'm excited for next year. Yeah, no, I think yeah. there could be a lot of great things that could come out of this. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Well, that's been good so far. Yeah. It's hard when you can't see what it's going to be. It's easy to say, oh, I'm nervous because I don't know what's coming. But I just feel like what I've learned over and over again this whole year is that we can't see it. But when we get there, God's going to meet us there. And a lot of really good things have happened. So I'm trying not to be nervous and say, that's okay. We'll get there. We'll know. Yeah, it'll yeah. be good. <laughs> yeah, I think the Sunday School uh, Leader Team uh, hopefully we'll meet uh, soon, and so we'll start to plan those ideas for next year. All right, well, can everybody um, thank Laura uh, for thank her you. good work? And if you just want to say after the Yeah. I had wrapped a scripture lesson into this, which I immediately forgot as soon as we started talking. But when I was reflecting on children's ministries this year, what came to my mind was a little piece of the story of the prodigal son. Uh, I have it, I think, uh, yes, in Luke chapter 15, uh, the story of the son, he was like irresponsible, took like his half of the inheritance and ran away from home and like basically went to Vegas, like spat it all, you know. And then when things get really bad, he comes back home. And so there's this little tiny piece of that story where it says, I'm not comparing our kids to, the kid, <laughs> <laughs> to that child, but it says, it's Luke 15, 20. While the son was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him, and he ran to his son and threw his arms around him and kissed him. The father represents God and the way God feels towards us when we come back to God. Um, but the long way off piece, it, it, being written that way, it reminds me that that father had the son on his mind before he could see him and had the day when he was going to see his son again in mind and was looking for it, like with intention. Like the son didn't have to knock on the door. The father was already there looking and, and anticipating and hoping. And that's how I feel about the children's ministries. Like we have been doing it remotely and in different ways, but I am looking with great anticipation uh, to the time that uh, we're even safer, more vaccines, and we can start to see the kids coming back in person uh, more and more combined with whatever we do remote. So there's my scriptural reflection. Uh, while they are still a long way off, we are looking for that to come. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, thank you, Laura. Um, I would like you to trade places with Miss Anissa. Where is Anissa? Come on down. We'll have you go quickly. Um, you can hop right up in this chair. Anissa, the chair is like as big as you are. <laughs> it's bigger. <laughs> How are you, honey? Good. Good. Okay. Let's make sure you um, pull that right up. There we go. Can you say hi? We can check your mic. Hi. Hi. Are we getting there? Let me clip it to her mask. <laughs> okay. Can you use a really big voice and say hi? Hi. There we go. That worked.
So, Anissa, you were on Zoom Sunday School a lot this year. I saw you when, because when, Eva would be on, and I go, look. Yeah, how was it? Was it good? Was it okay? Yeah, it was good. It was good? Yeah. What was your favorite thing about it? Bingo. Bingo! Yeah, Adam led the bingo classes, didn't he? Yeah. Did you get bingo a lot? Yeah. Well, then he did a good job leading it, keep you happy like that. And what was kind of hard about it? Or weird? Don't know? Okay. So it probably felt a little normal because you did so much remote school too this year. Yeah. And what do you think you're most looking forward to when we come back next school year? What grade are you going to be in next school year? Fifth. Fifth? Yeah. Question mark. You hope so, right? <laughs> so does your mama. Um, so in fifth grade, when we start fifth grade, what are you most looking forward to back here at the church? More bingo. Okay. Well, there we are. We've got a fan of bingo. Thank you, Anissa. You can stay right here. And we are going to hear, this is, this is how life is right now. Timmy wanted to talk to us, but Timmy's busy this morning. So Timmy's mom sent a video. So we get to see a uh, pre-recorded asynchronous Timmy uh, for the next interview to talk about how mentoring went with Laura. And that's up to Daniel to, uh, to share that video. We are so thankful that Laura was our mentor. We, we, we met up with her on Zoom every Wednesday at 2 o'clock. And she oh, just Daniel, sent there's us no sound like on the video. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, like we're going to ask you to try to restart it one time. And if we can get sound the second time, that's great. And if not, we will move on to the next interview. You know what I'm looking forward to? I've got Calvin sitting up here next to me. I am looking forward to um, our new broadcast software because this is going to be so much easier and go so much smoother. Go. We are so thankful that Laura was our mentor. We, we, we met up with her on Zoom every Wednesday at 2 o'clock, and she just sent us, like, a bunch of stuff, like a Dunkin' Donuts gift card, a McDonald's gift card, and a ball in the shape of the earth, and flowers. And we, 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 learned, we learned about, like, there was, like, a, there was, like, a huge thing of papers you know and we learned like about a bunch of people and stuff and it was like kind of, it was like parts of the bible and the only thing we didn't like was that we weren't in person thank you Laura. Laura. thank you Laura, uh, for being our mentor yeah what she said Awesome. Yes, we got some applause for them. <laughs> Timmy's, Timmy's a good one for making people laugh. I'm so glad Riley in, chimed in because she can be shy. Um, next, again, uh, because this is the real world and uh, the world we're living in, uh, we have uh, someone to talk about confirmation. That is David Wyatt. He is at home and joining us on Zoom. David, you can camera on and unmute. Uh, David is home because he just got his COVID shot and he's feeling a little bit tired, his mom said. Yeah, I feel a little sick from the COVID shot. Yeah, I bet. So David, I can see your hair, buddy. Can we see your face? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not feeling good, but. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. This your first shot? Yeah. Yeah, did you get Pfizer or Moderna? Um, I got Pfizer. Nice. Okay, good. We uh, liked Gatorade, David, uh, when we uh, 
they helped us a lot when we had our shot. So to go tell your mom. Uh. Gatorade. <laughs> So David, you came to confirmation class, uh, and you were also in confirmation last year when things were whatever normal was, right? So mm -hmm. you remember it before, and you remember it from last year. Um, can you tell me one thing that stayed the same about confirmation? I think like the acceptance, the, like some people knew a lot about God, other people didn't, but everyone like came together and it was kind of like a little family and everyone was like really friendly. And everyone was just really accepting. That's great. That's great. And uh, one, well, one thing that changed is that, you know, masks. Yeah. Or whatever. What did you miss in, in the way that confirmation changed? Um, I think I missed making dinner. That was always like my favorite part about confirmation. Okay. I always thought that was like the funnest part. What was your favorite dinner that we made, David? Look at um, oh my God. Yeah. I really liked when we made, I think we made tacos. It has something to do with peppers. I just remember I ate a lot of peppers. Awesome. Okay, that'll be right on the menu for the first one in the fall uh, that's coming up soon. Um, so, David, you are going to be confirmed on June 13th. Yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah, are you going to come here in person or are we going to see you up on the wall? Uh, I'm definitely going to come here in person. Okay, good. Well, we're looking forward to it. We're proud of you. Thank you for hanging in Thank there for third year. And um, we hope that you feel much better really quickly. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, David. He's so good to do that. Oh my goodness. He was like, Yeah, I'll be there in person. His mom said, Here's what I'm His mom was like, And he's going to zoom in. I was like, Okay. His mom had a hint. Speaking of moms, how are you, buddy? I'm doing all right. This is my son, Calvin. Uh, Calvin is here to speak to us about youth group. Mm -hmm. This is the last of the four different aspects of Christian ed. Um, what would you like to tell us about youth group? Calvin, what's on your mind? You are an eloquent speaker, so I'll let you take the lead. Uh, I'd say youth group, I really enjoyed it this year. There was a lot of fun activities we got to do. And even when it wasn't as fun, such as taping Easter eggs to the floor for a little walkthrough, um, there were always friends there, so it was always interesting. And most importantly, there was food there. All right, yeah, we still have food at youth group snack time. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So um, what are you looking forward to in youth group coming up? Oh, I'm just looking forward to seeing all the friends and doing all the other activities because the activities we were able to do this year weren't all too eventful or broad because of all the COVID restrictions. Right, it would be nice when this restriction tie left in. All right, Calvin. Well, thanks for being a good soldier and showing up to talk about youth group. We appreciate you. Mm -hmm. All right, fantastic. You may go back to your seat. All right, so we're another a quick switch. Um, let's get some Sunday school teachers up here. Ruth, Adam, Elaine, and Bob. Um, you have been holding it down for Christian education this year. Uh, come on up. Come on down, whatever you want to say. I want you to see the faces of these teachers who we appreciate so much. These are the ones who... Uh, hung out on Zoom on Sunday mornings. Oh my gosh, and Adam, I'm so sorry, Adam. Ruth, Adam, Elaine, and Bob, that's right on my list. Did I say something different? I may have. So you need to stand on the red carpet if you want people to see you. Red carpet, there you go. Uh, so Adam, stand here, we need you on the red carpet. So these are our four Sunday morning Sunday school teachers. This is the, the bingo leader that we've heard so much about, Adam. <laughs> All right, there we go. Thank you, we're just making sure you're on camera, which is like all of what we do right now. So we have some gifts for you, wanna give that to Bob? And give it to Elaine, and here's uh, Ruth, Ruth, and Adam. All right, yay, one more round of applause, and uh, Bob and Elaine, you stay here, but uh, Ruth and Adam, please go back to your seats. Yes, God bless you, hug, 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 hug. All right. I want to um, acknowledge Mentors, and Lucy, I'm going to ask you to get the camera mobile, please. Um, the Mentors now, and so Bob and uh, Laura, if you'd come up, and Sarah, we're going to bring a camera to you, so you don't have to get up. All right. Are, are you sure? Okay. All right. Good for you. Fantastic. One of the beautiful things 
about mentoring this year is that um, Sarah, you, you especially, as you make your way up here, please come up and turn around. Um, it really blessed me. Sometimes it's hard to get out at different seasons of life. Uh, but Sarah was able to be so active and involved um, because it was remote, so it allowed greater access. So, Laura, go ahead and stand on the red carpet so people will be able to see you. Um, Sarah had a mentoring group of uh, mostly freshman-ish uh, students. And a seventh grader, that's right. Um, and Bob mentored Calvin and Laura, we heard from earlier, and we're just so thankful for you. So let's give them a hand and we're gonna give you some gifts. There you are, Sarah. And uh, yes, Gigi, come on up, and Calvin, come on up and please give the cards. Uh, Eva, come on up and give the card to Laura, please. All right, oh, we appreciate you so much. All right, uh, sp sprint back to your seats, you, you, you lackeys. Here you go. All right. All right. Okay, yeah, you can turn off the video. All right. And then finally, Sam, come here and talk to me just for a minute. I got something for you, too. So many set changes. Another thing our new broadcasting software is going to help us to do is to be much more easily functioning with cameras. Yes. And I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, so Sam, you're a confirmation teacher. You are the lead confirmation teacher, and I appreciate you. And, and I got this gift and didn't tell him anything about it and wrapped it up. He never saw it. It will be a surprise. Yay. Do you want to open your gift because it's the same? Okay. Or almost the same as what everybody else has gotten. Uh, but I appreciate you leading. Go ahead. Leading confirmation so much. I'm usually the head cook. We've talked about doing the cooking and then eating together, and you teach. Yeah. So I was out of a job. Anyway, these are uh, leather-bound journals uh, with the church's name on them. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. Thank go. you. Yeah, those were made by uh, Dee Kymock's husband. That's his business. Thank you, Brad. Shout out to Brad. Yeah. All right, so we, I think I did it all. I think that was everybody. Oh, youth group Sam and Elaine. We saw Elaine earlier, but... Uh, you guys were the leaders for um, the youth, and we just appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. So, thank you to everybody. We made it. <laughs> we made it through this bizarre year. Okay. So, um, now we move to a time of offering. Uh, there's a donation link that's dropping in the comments. Uh, if you are able to give a gift, we appreciate you for that. And you're just a little off camera, sorry. Um, and thank you. So many folks have made pledges to the church and said they would give consistently and sort of given us a heads up about that. And that's really helped us to stay stable. So thank you to our pledgers and thank you to everybody who's able to give a gift uh, this morning to encourage the ministry of the church. Uh, a couple updates on giving. Um, we had been talking about the broadcast updates, the sound investment. Um, we have uh, developed a plan to uh, do better broadcasting and the software and hardware that go along with that total package, about $7,000. We applied this last week for a $3,000 grant for part of that from the conference. We'll find out next month sometime. They said, they said, we'll tell you in June. I was like, okay, June. Like, that's 30 whole different days. <laughs> By yeah. when? Oh, so right. probably put June 30th. Yeah. Anyway, we'll find out in June. We had to raise $4,000. We have raised over $4,000 in one week for this project. Give yourself a hand. Boom. And some, some of you online uh, gave to that as well, and that, that's really been encouraging. Yeah. So we look forward to being able to transition into that maybe in uh, July when we get yeah. the funds and the equipment set up. And I just want to go back to the bacon smell of the church. <laughs> like We finally got to use the kitchen after taking a 15-month break. And I only made three pancakes, and then youth took over, and they made the rest of the pancakes, and Bonnie helped with bacon, and so did some more youth. So yeah. we're training up new cooks. <laughs> yes, showing the love of Christ through food. Through food, yeah. yeah. It's important. Yeah, awesome. And another uh, giving update. Uh, we haven't uh, touched on this yet this morning, but uh, many of you in the church community know about the loss of our uh, member and friend, Don Marie Woodman. Uh, this past week uh, lost to addiction and um, I do have a word about the services just found out this morning there are going to be visiting hours here at the church Saturday from 1 to 3 Saturday from 1 to 3 they're expecting a lot of people so we're just going to keep people moving through because of 
size limitations. Yeah. Um, but that's when uh, the visiting time for Don Marie will be. We've been taking a collection for, to help her young daughters uh, with her funeral expenses um, and have raised about $2,000 uh, to help, which is a long way towards helping um, funerals so expensive. So um, thank you to everyone who's given for that. Um, anyway, that's, that's the money update. All right. Uh, I have no other announcements, I don't think. So we have to do celebration and thanks, and all we've been doing all morning is celebrating and thanking the teachers. So let's do it one last time. Thunderous applause. We appreciate you. All right. Um, so. We have confirmation this afternoon. We do, 4 p.m. Yeah. here in the room. Ooh, I wonder if David's going to need to zoom in for that, too. Maybe. We can do that. Yeah, because we had someone in our family who was a close contact with someone who did get COVID. So that day, we were like, all right, everyone, zoom. Remote. Remote. Off you go. Remote confirmation. All right. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the celebratory days, the days that we can look back and see your faithfulness to us and um, be so glad God, it helps to balance the days that are um, just disorienting and sad and difficult so help us to hold memories of this sweet day in our hearts and in our minds and and how good you are to us always god now we pray for those for whom we're concerned uh, we begin as always especially this week god praying with those who are struggling with or in recovery from addiction, and we ask for heal, healing and wholeness and new life. We pray for those with mental illness, depression, and anxiety. God, we continue in prayer for those with long-term illnesses. Um, Barbara, uh, excuse me, yeah, Barbara Schinnebarger um, and also uh, Daniel Schinnebarger's foot. Uh, we ask for healing uh, for Michael Boucher's parents. We pray for Joe Connors, who has cancer, and his wife, Camille, who's recuperating from surgery. We pray for Marie Patrice Mass, uh, Marie LaRose's friend who's in hospice. And we pray along with Jan Condry for her friend Gail, who has had a return of breast cancer after 21 years. Now we pray for Robin Wilson's cousin Billy, who has a bone marrow transplant this week, for John Meredith's friend Stacy with cancer, uh, for Shirley Duggan's friend Kristen and her cancer treatments. Um, we pray for Johnny Nichols' friend Zach, who's just moved to Boston for rehab. God, we add um, concern uh, uh, for Carolyn's successful surgery on Tuesday um, and I, for the Tenney family who lost Doug Tenney's father last week. God, there are many joys among us. Uh, today, for Robin Wilson's parents, Joe and Janet, who will celebrate 60 years of marriage on Thursday, uh, we ask for continued blessings upon them. Uh, God, we thank you for a new grandson, Trey, for Rob and Jill Wilkinson, for Abby Shedd's graduation from the University of New England in dentistry. Uh, we celebrate that Norma Pierce's daughter received her master's degree in occupational therapy yesterday. Uh, we celebrate um, the teachers and students at Aldersgate and the innovation that uh, we've experienced in Christian education. Uh, finally, God, we thank you for the life of John Marie Woodman uh, and for the inspiration and um, a miracle that she was for so long and we ask for comfort for her loved ones especially her daughters Shay and Maddie God you have heard our prayers now we ask that you would hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Well, I think we did it. I hope the teachers feel properly appreciated and celebrated today, uh, that you felt the love of the community both here and uh, coming in online. And um, we just were so grateful for you. So thanks for being here, everybody, uh, and, and you. Uh, for celebrating with us. Uh, we will send it over to Daniel for a final song.
Listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Spirit in 